Okay, we're here with three-time Ironman World Championship swim course leader and arguably one of the fastest, if not the fastest swimmer in the sport, Josh Amberger. Thanks for joining us today, Josh. Cheers. Uh, so we've got a number of tips that we're gonna run through from Josh. Okay, so first tip, Josh. Uh, yeah, so first tip, um Everyone's got always a lot of technical aspects of their stroke they have to work on. I've personally been working a lot, of, a lot on my, my breath timing, so I try and swim bilateral um, as much as possible because I found I was always breathing to my left, like since as long as I can remember. And it's creating imbalance or something? Yeah, straight, I was yeah. getting wicked pain on my back um, through like my QLs. And um, yeah, once I started to, to breathe bilaterally in training, that pain kind of like almost disappeared. Now does, it, does that mean you race bilaterally or does it just mean, do you, do you just go back to whatever you're comfortable with on race day and then just train bilaterally? Going to the races, I'd still always breathe to one side and I'd feel that back pain come on in the race. And yeah, so this year I had a coach pick apart my swimming and he saw me breathing to the left in the warm up and told me how shit it was. I was kind of like stroking and then breathing, uh -huh. whereas it's, yeah. it's more about like a fluid movement yeah. as, as kind of like your hand goes past your ear. So is there anything you kind of worked on with like specific sessions or drills that helped that? There was, yeah, there was a drill. I couldn't tell you what it's called, but it, it was basically like a half stroke down and then a full stroke and you just like whip the head to the left. Okay. And so then this hand stays out here, half stroke, down. So that's just to like slow you down and get ready for the bang. So you say, you said this hasn't got a name yet. Do you want to um, name it here? Um, what cool. can we name it? Cool. Ber Berg's Bash. <laughs> Berg's Bash. Let's nice, call it there Berg's we go, bash. Berg's Bash. Yeah. So tip two, uh, I'm gonna say, always be conscious of your stroke rate. So my stroke rate can be, can feel very different and be very different depending on uh, how tired I am going into swimming that day. But definitely in a race like yesterday, I'm basically attempting to swim as fast as possible, go for the course record if I can. And yeah, my stroke rate was, was very, very consistent, um, like a, just a really fast tempo. And that's definitely something you, you need to train for, um, probably more so in the open water because if you're, uh, if you're swimming in the pool and you're tumble turning every 25 to 50 meters, it's, it's very easy, I feel, to like lose track of, of your stroke rate. You're always getting a little bit of recovery and you're always able to, to really kind of fold back into a rhythm very easily, whereas if you train for a high stroke rate in open water, you get kind of like a true representation of what stroke rate you're able to hold with for a period of time without any little bits of incremental rest every time you, you hit the tumble turn. So uh, one one good thing to do is is get a, a, an aqua pacer, something that you can put in your in your cap and it's beeping at you every every kind of time you stroke. But uh, yeah, given that, everyone strokes very differently. Um, straight arm swimmers might stroke a bit higher. Um, I'm kind of like a, I've got, I, I feel like a, it's an open water style, but you can tell that it comes from the pool. And um, it's, it's a very fluid stroke. And yeah, I'm probably sitting somewhere in between in, in, in terms of stroke rate. Do you know your stroke rate out of interest or like at, in race pet, in race? Oh yeah. No idea. Try and come up with tips, mate. I'm making this up. <laughs> yeah, so third tip um, get used to uh, equipment aids, let's call it. So for me, everyone hates them or loves to, loves to hate them, but um, floaty shorts, I really love them. I find that they're a fantastic training tool. Training for an Ironman, you're pretty much always under very heavy bike and run load. And generally as a triathlete, you're, you're always tired. So every time you jump into the pool, you're not gonna feel 100%. And I feel 
that having a lot of buoyancy through the hips and it, it's obviously helping you you lift lift your legs up and, and improve your body position so sometimes that it, it can feel a lot easier but it's also avoiding getting into bad habits if you're going to the pool always tired but expecting to try and improve your swim at the same time so for me little aids like that can really help your feeling in the swim and avoid you getting into bad technical habits. But I guess it's important not to rely on them at the same time, so I guess you mix it up, right? Yeah, so you don't want to go do some dive hundreds with your float shorts on and go, oh, damn, I'm swimming fast. I'm doing like 105s, 100. But then, you know, you take them, you're not getting the times when you take them off, so, which is probably about five seconds slower, to be honest. So yeah, don't let it build your confidence, but just use it as like a, a complementary tool. Okay, Josh, on to the fourth tip now. So the fourth tip is relevant again to the open water. And I feel that it is very important as a triathlete to get used to people being around you in the water. So it happens to pros, happens to amateurs, but you jump in the water with a bunch of other people, you can't control their movements, and all of a sudden you, you feel really anxious about getting pulled over. Uh, put, pulled under um, and you know just generally getting hassled and and it's it's always going to affect you if you're not comfortable being around people so I've been working with uh, helping my partner Ashley Gentle try and develop some drafting techniques uh, for, for her ITU races and it's going to be something as simple you start with something as simple as doing say one or two hundred repeats and it's just like, just stay on the feet for as long as possible. I've found that sometimes people who have anxiety around being very close to someone in the water and drafting and, and touching them is, you, you gotta give them like little tasks to do during the swim to kind of take their mind off what they're actually doing. So um, earlier in the year, I found this worked really well where Ash has the ability to stay on my feet, but She's nervous around, about being around someone, so I, I tell her that every lap of the pool she had to touch my feet three times, and that meant that she had to, at speed, be swimming as hard as she could, but she's thinking more about touching my feet three times than about what's around her and what's making her feel uncomfortable in that environment. So I found, yeah, just developing like some little techniques like that can really help you be comfortable around people in the open water and it's it's working on your drafting skills at the same time which is in this game uh, critical to be able to, to sit in a pack and not get spat out all the time. All right great stuff um, I believe you've got one final tip for us. Yeah mate tip five it's five tips with Josh so I'm going to talk about race day specific equipment so I've got two pairs of goggles here um, I swim in the zone three attack and there's the mirrored polarized version and then there's the clear version. So I find that depending on the conditions, it's important to, to have experience and have on hand um, a different shade of goggle. So this race, um, we we're starting, the sun's just rising and I needed, I needed a, definitely a mirrored goggle um, to attack this swim course yesterday and uh, yeah, I didn't want to be blinded by the sun at all. And yeah, so I went with, with the mirrored goggle, but definitely equally as much choose the clear goggle. Uh, if the you know, low light conditions, if it's, if it's cloudy and so forth, you really need to be able to spot those boys and just changing the goggles you can help that, that. You need the clear set a lot in the UK. <laughs> yeah, I, I could imagine, yeah. <laughs> so the other thing, um, race day equipment is, um, I've chosen this year to run a, a sleeved swim skin. I always try and train in, in that bit of equipment quite often because I feel it can, it can kind of like elevate and change your body position in the water. It more or less enhances your body position in the water and you, you more or less need to be able to, to train and, and feel that change between uh, training and race day. 
Right, well, that was brilliant to hear. Thanks ever so much for joining us today, Josh. If you have enjoyed today's video, please do hit that thumbs up button. And if you'd like to see more videos from GTN, you can click on the globe and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to watch Lucy Charles swim tips, click here. Yeah, and if you would like to see this year's Ironman World Championships Kona recap video, which Josh features in, you can see that by clicking just down here.